Hey there, this is Megan with CounselingWise.com. Have you ever wondered whether or not you should include images on your therapy blog? Well, in this short video, I'm going to teach you just that, whether or not you should use images on your blog posts and why. So should you use images on your blog posts? The answer is yes, a big yes, and I'm going to tell you exactly why that is. So just some fun facts about images um, based on some research that people have done. Um, according to research, blog posts with relevant images get 94% more views than blog posts without images. So that is a huge, huge percentage to consider whenever you're thinking about adding images to your blog posts. If 94% more um, views are occurring from blog posts with relevant Im images, then I think it's definitely worth um, considering images on your blog posts. Another fun fact is the human brain processes images much quicker than text. So just including images on your site makes it easier to read through the text itself and it makes it, you know, much more compelling and uh, conveys the message better. So why do you need images on your blog? Well, the first reason why you should use images on your therapy blog post is because blog posts with images will get more views. And the reason why that is is because images naturally grab your attention. So if you're scrolling through social media, if you're on someone's website, or if you know a potential client is on your website and they see an image as opposed, of a as opposed to a big block of text, their attention is automatically going to be grabbed. So having images on your blogs is going to make it much more likely for someone to click through to your blog post and stay there to read it. Another reason why images um, are so important for your blog is because images get more likes and shares on social media. Now, I know some of you probably aren't on social media, which is totally okay, but if you are on social media and you're sharing your blog posts on your um, Facebook page, if you're sharing it in private Facebook groups, wherever you are sharing these blog posts, if you include an image in your post, it's going to automatically pull that over and those are going to get much more likes and shares than blog posts that are just text. So that's another reason why you should really be including images on your blog. Um, another reason why is that images increase reader engagement. So if someone comes to your website and they're clicking through to your pages and they see that you have a blog and they click through to that and they see your blog posts have images, it's much more likely that they're going to click through to those blog posts and stay on your site longer. And this is gonna increase reader engagement, it's gonna increase the time spent on your site, which is great for ranking in Google, and it's really just gonna be a really good experience for the reader themselves. So having those images on your site is really great for reader engagement. Another reason why is that images can communicate your message beyond, beyond what words can express. So if you have a blog that's talking about depression and you have a great image of you know, a man sitting on uh, some stairs with his hand, with his head in his hands, then that's going to be able to communicate your message beyond what words can express. Because if you, um, if you have a potential client that comes to your site and they are depressed and they see that image and they're like, wow, that's exactly how I feel sometimes, you know, I really want to put my head in my hands and just sit there and feel, you know, I just want to feel bad and whatever those feelings may be. So those messages um, are communicated or those images communicate that message beyond what words can express. So having those images on your blog is another great way to um, make your, your readers feel more connected to what you're, what you're conveying in those blog posts. And the last reason is that images make content more memorable. And this is just this is just a reason because when you see your blog post and you're reading through it and you see a really great image like the example I just gave about the depression image, it's going to make it more memorable than if it was just a big chunk of text. So reading through that, your content is already going to be very valuable. So not only is the value of the content going to be remembered, but also that image that's associated with, with the content itself is going to make your content much more memorable. Which, you know, if that's the case, your potential clients are much more likely to give you a call to set up a free consultation or contact you to just get started with counseling. So there's all a lot of really great reasons to include images on your blog, and we definitely recommend that you do so if you're not already doing so. So just a quick recap or just a quick review of types of images to use on your therapy blog. You want to use relevant, relatable images. You don't want to use images that have nothing to do with your blog post, so definitely stick to relevant, relatable images on your posts.
You also want images that convey the emotions of the pose. So kind of going back to that example about the depression, the, the depressed man, having images that convey the emotions that you're sharing in the various posts that you're writing is going to be another great idea for images. You can also use graphics with the post title. So if you just, you're like, I really don't know what image to use in this post. I can't find one. I'm just, I really don't want to find an image. What you can do is you can use um, free online tools to create graphics with just the post title. So you can go to one of our favorite tools is canva.com. Go over to Canva and you can actually create a graphic with just the title of your blog post and you can use that as your image. Again, all of the, you know, all of the reasons why images are important are going to work perfectly for graphics as well. So you can use a graphic instead of an image. That's definitely fine. And one last thing is I recommend avoiding cheesy pose stock photos. And you may not know what I'm talking about here, but if you go to iStockphoto.com and you type in depressed male or whatever, you know, if you want to type in happy woman or whatever it may be, you will see a lot of really posed stock photos um, that are not what you're going to want to use. So you don't want to mock people with their emotions. You don't want to do, you know, an overly emotional and cheesy picture um, about happiness or an overly emotional cheesy picture about depression um, that could potentially mock your readers. So definitely avoid those posed photos. Now there are going to be a lot of really great photos on iStockphoto.com as well. So go check those out. They have really, really nice photos. So if you um, just avoid those posed ones, you'll be good to go. <laughs> So I hope you found this information to be helpful. If so, it would be really great if you could comment on the video and share it. Um, also, you could download our free report if you want to learn more about blogging for your therapy website. Um, it's called Seven Creative Ways to Get Ideas for Blog Post Topics. It's a really, really great report that we put together just for you. So go ahead over to counselingwise.com slash blogging dash topics, and you can actually download that report for free. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Have a great day. Bye-bye.